Well, are you ready, Richard? Yeah, man. <laughs> I think we are in for a big day. Um, you know, the continued Milo 2 saga. Got a whole lot of things going on, even the dog's excited. Um, radiator's back. The terrain tamer radiator, back from my mates, the local radiator service. They've just put a 90 degree elbow in the bottom. Driveline services made up a couple of drive shafts out of the, the best bits of the 60s and the, and the 40 drive shafts I had here. Um, took a bit of mucking around to get it exactly right, but it was my fault, not theirs. Done a beautiful job. They've phased them up too, perfectly. Um, terrain tamer supplied us with a fan and a clutch hub. The two H ones, so they should be recessed back a little bit. That'll mean that finally we got a bit of clearance between the fan and the radiator. We've got a radiator hose kit and we've got the AVM hubs. So by the end of today, with a little bit of luck, we should have the cooling system finished, um, the drive line just about finished. We've already done the brakes on the chassis and we'll get the wheels back on the front so we can roll it around a bit. Then we're just waiting to pick up those turbo cooling and lubricating lines. See what we do with those. Gee, mate, we could just about turn the key and go. I reckon it's having like nearly there. <laughs> Big day. But even when it's one step forward and two steps back, building trucks is just too much fun not to do it, isn't it? Come on, give it a go yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's just fouling on there, mate. Yeah, they said it would. The guys I talked to. Probably about... Oh, mil, six mil, something like that. And it'll hit up here too. That's right. Um, it wouldn't be any great bother to pull a bit off the inside no, of the fan right. blades. No, that's right. We've got to make sure we take the, exactly the same off each blade so it, don't, so it stays in balance. So. so it stays in balance, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. it's not going to look good with a piece of plasticine stuck on it, is it? No. Nah. Nah. <laughs> well, that's all right. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll get a measure on it. We, mm. we want to take as little as possible off, that's I reckon. Right. Describe it and just... Gingerly take it down. Yeah. Okay, a little bit of an update. Um, Richard just realised the studs are a bit long, so they need a bit of a trim before we can get the AVMs on. I remember doing this last time. I had slightly shorter studs. They came in a bag with them. So anyway, that's all right. No dramas. Uh, he did a trim on the fan too. Did a really nice job, mate. That looks lovely. Yeah, should be good. It looks like it's in balance too. <laughs> hey, so hey, bad. hey. Well, shake your bones away. Oh, it won't matter, it's a Toyota. <laughs> um, so now we've got all the belt work finished, the fans finished. Simon uh, decided to have a go at the vacuum hosing, and boy, I'm glad he did, because that would have driven me mad. But we just went through it all. We're going to do it as standard, so it'll have a vacuum uh, rev riser, a vacuum cut off, and all these other things. Then we're going to get rid of most of them and turn them into hand controls so that we don't have to put up with all that vacuum stuff. That'll happen later though, one step at a time. Um, couldn't get bolts for the drive shafts anywhere. Did a lap of town here, then we found them in the toolbox. That was exciting. Um, look at this now, this is the big one for me. Plenty of clearance. When the radiator and the shroud goes in, there's gonna be buckets of clearance. Um, this clearance between fan and radiator is absolutely essential on a four-wheel drive because if you go driving into water or mud or anything else the fan will actually flex forward and take out the radiator or you're snatching someone or you're doing something else there's a million reasons the whole motor can shift around a bit you need lots of clearance we're nailing this it's taken a while but we're nailing it cool not that blokes have got much else to do on a day like this okay um According to the manual, because we do look at it every now and then, um, 130 to 160 <coughs> foot pounds on the um, end of the crankshaft to hold the main pulley on, okay? But it's on a keyway anyway, and I don't own a torque wrench, not since the last one got bent. So I'm gonna do what I always do, which is what I know everybody else does, which is lock it up, in fourth gear, take that bolt out, give it a good clean, put a little bit of Loctite on it, and then hit it with about two feet of bar, as tight as I can. That'll do it. It'll never go anywhere. Burn out FT. Hey? Burn out FT. FT, effing tight. <laughs> do you want to hop on that crank handle for me, Richard? Yeah. Would you mind?
bending, isn't it? <laughs> it's bending that, is it? Gee, I like playing with new tools. There's nothing like it. The ratchets feel good. I'm just not used to it, eh? I'm used to crappy old stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll work. Plenty of clearance. Cleans the pulleys. Cool. The moment of truth. Because we um, modified the bottom radiator outlet to avoid the new power steering pump, now we've got to modify the fan shroud so that we can get it to fit. Oops. That's the go, mate. I reckon that's the gun, mate. I think that's it, eh? Yeah. Have a look at this. This is, uh, we've got this added to the radiator to kick it away from the power steering pump. But when we put it on, well, you can see there was no clearance, obviously, because the end of the power steering pump has punched that in about a quarter of an inch. Um, so now, trip back to the radiator shop and we'll have to get him to take the corner out of that somehow. At least he can see what we're doing now. Because we've got an instant clearance marker already <laughs> attached to it. <laughs> this will only be the third time we've done this. But that's what it's all about when you custom build something, eh? Hey, you know? If it was bolt together, everyone would do it. Right, so John's just popped down the shop to sort the radiator problem out. Um, been through the box, found all the bolts for the prop shaft, cleaned them up on the wire wheel, load of Lanatech around them. She could have fit the, uh, the prop shafts while he's out. It's good. I've got these drive shafts made up over at Driveline Services in Archerfield. Now, you want to get an expert like them to do this kind of work for you because it, you know, it, it really is important. They do nothing but trucks and buses and just about everything you can think of, four-wheel drive, so they know about this stuff. Uh, they ask me all the right questions, including, are you going to lift the suspension in future? Yes, I am. Probably a couple of inches. So, meanwhile... I'm back from doing a round of the traps. It's still chucking down rain. Gee, I'm glad I got the Jeep to drive around in today instead of the motorbike with the rack on the back, I can tell you. Well, not much else a bloke could have done today except uh, go and play in the mud. Plenty of that even in my yard. But apart from the radiator not working, it's back being fixed. A um, couple of other minor things. We've made a fair bit of headway. About a half as much headway as I thought we would when we started the day. But that's what you get, eh? You know? Um, that's what custom's all about. We'll get there. Next week, cooling system finished.